Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate a new product in the Exabeam Security Operations platform, Exabeam Security Log Management, an affordable cloud native security log management solution we think you will love. The Exabeam Security Log Management offering has been built from the ground up with scale in mind. The platform encompasses a set of core capabilities to get you started. These include log collection, data management, search, dashboarding, and powerful correlation. Today, I'm going to walk you through all of these features and functionalities while showing you how these will effectively help organizations. What you can see is the Exabeam Security Operations Platform. From here, I have access to all of the different applications. The solution was built with a real core focus of making it easy to get data into Exabeam, to be able to normalize it, enrich it, and then be able to leverage that enriched log data. The first part of the process is to retrieve the log data. Exabeam built a collector management application. Collectors collect data from hundreds of products on, from on-premise logs to cloud-delivered security products, SaaS applications, and cloud infrastructures. There are three types of collectors. Cloud collectors, by which we can collect data from over 40 plus cloud vendors. Site collectors, where we can retrieve data from Syslog, Splunk, and LDAP. And context collectors, which allow custom context from various sources, such as threat intelligence resources. I won't be dwelling too much on the collectors, as I really want to see if I've already collected data. I have my collectors deployed, and now I want to make sure that I'm able to see the data, that I'm passing it, that I'm enriching it, and that it's going to be useful for my downstream applications. In order to do this, we built an application called Logstream. Logstream sits on top of our unified ingestion pipeline. This is a single place to ingest all log and context data at scale. It's actually been certified for a sustained million EPS per tenant. With Logstream, I'm able to see and understand how my passes are performing and to see what data that I'm ingesting is being passed. Right away, I can see how many passes are currently enabled and the health of those passes. So I can see that right now I have 134 passes passing out of all of the different data feeds that are coming in. And this is out of over 8,000 pre-built default passes. I can see some of them are in error state, which I may decide to troubleshoot later. I can then take a look at parser health over time. This is where I realize that parsers firing on real-time data aren't always consistent. This is probably because I don't always have the same logs being generated every single second. And so my parsers may increase and decrease just a little bit as they're streaming in. So I can see clearly here that I'm fairly consistent around the 120, 130 parser range of the last 24 hours. And finally, I see my most active vendors. So again, this is a great visualization of understanding out of all the data that's coming into the platform, which ones are passing and how many logs are being passed on each one of those vendors. And is it actually what I'm expecting to see? For example, if I just onboarded by checkpoint logs, then that's great. I can now see the logs that have been passed and this is my number one vendor at the moment. If we scroll down, we can start to see all of the passes that are active in the pipeline. I can see the parser name, the vendor, and the product of these passes. I can see the events that were built post Exabeam's normalization as part of our common information model. I can see the volume of logs matching these passes, the status, the health, and when they were last updated. I can also reorder these passes here. We call this parser precedence, and this makes sure that I can actually ensure that the right default pass is matching the right logs and the format that I'm bringing in. I could import passes. I can also create brand new passes using our auto parser generator, which has now been built into the Logstream application. And I can free text search. So let's say I want to look at some of these checkpoint passes. I can use a free text search. This shows me that I have two passes here, which I can do various things with. I can view the details, which we're going to do in just a moment. I could customize this if I wanted to extract more fields or change field extractions. I could duplicate this parser, disable it, or launch Livetail. And we'll talk about Livetail in just a second. But first, let's view the details of these parsers. When I open up the detail for any parser, I see the new consistent naming convention that we employed for all our parsers. I can see the naming convention is the vendor, the product, the format of the logs, and the output event type. We've also introduced versioning here. So I can clearly see if I'm on the latest version or the changes in the versions. Any changes to these passes are audited and I can see these in the activity log. I can see the actual configuration of the parser and the event builder configuration files if I so wish. And I can also see an extraction preview, which is showing an actual sample of my checkpoint logs in extraction themselves 
and the value of the extractions based on the parser configuration. At any point in time, I can click the Customize button, which pivots me into the Auto Parser Generator workflow, where I can scroll down to review all the tokenized fields and continue to extract more and more fields if I so wish. As you can see so far, we really wanted to make sure that we provide the right end-to-end -end seamless troubleshooting experience for log management. So when you're looking at a parser and need to make changes, we can guide you through to that next step to be able to extract more fields, validate those fields, and get these new extractions into the pipeline within a matter of minutes. I did mention we'd look at Livetail. In addition to Logstream, we have Livetail. This provides you with a live look into the pipeline. So if I had just ingested those checkpoint logs we spoke of, configured my firewalls to syslog the data to our on-prem site collector, I can then in real time see and validate those checkpoint logs I'm making into the ingestion pipeline and into the Exabeam platform. I've paused this for the purpose of this demonstration, but I can replay this at any time to continue the ingestion of logs. I can look at the parser logs for events that are not being passed, where I may need to create a new parser, how many of our core detection and information fields defined by the common information model are available in this log. So, in summary, this is Logstream. As you can tell, it will really help organizations streamline the data onboarding and make sure that the data is set up for success and be able to be leveraged by the downstream applications. Now, once I have data coming in and it's being normalized and being enriched, I may want to start searching those logs. So, I'd like to introduce you to our new search application. We've built a new search application to sol solve two challenges, both the real-time search on hot data and, as well as that, long-term historical search needs. Some organizations want to be able to search data for the last 10 years. Previously, we had two products that did this, the hot data storage and our data lake. And we also had our cloud archive for long-term storage. We've now merged these experiences into one. So within the new search application, I can search the logs from the last 10 minutes or the last 10 years. And you'll notice in just a second when I demonstrate how quickly we can get results back from that data. One of the things that we notice for most organizations when they log into a search experience for the first time is that their first search is usually a star search because they're not quite sure what data exists for them to actually search and explore. Because we do normalization and enrichment on ingest, we're able to build a simple point and click search experience. For more advanced users, we can also pivot to the search editor as well, where I can just type in all of the different queries that I want. We give you various different places to start and all of the fields available here that I can click on to drive my search out dynamic. And they're based on the data that is actually being ingested into your environment. I could search by the subjects, which are high level objects. For example, I could look at my database logs or my email activity. I could start by searching on specific vendors and products or any of the predefined common information model fields on the right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for network logs. I'm going to go ahead and let's search over the last 24 hours. And as you can see, in just a matter of seconds, I receive over 2 million results across all of my network logs. I can see here on the left hand side, I have a filter summary. From here, I can review or select how these specific logs are broken down. For example, if I wanted to look at the destination port or by product. In this case, I have Checkpoint and Cisco. If I click on any of the raw log entries, I can see all of the relevant fields associated with this log. I can see the full raw log and all of the past fields. I can toggle on the eye icon to build up my query further if I so wish. Again, these are all dynamic. So when I'm looking into network logs, we have exposed things like the destination IP, destination port, protocols. If I was looking at endpoint logs or process executions, it would show the file path and information that's relevant. Now I mentioned we searched for 24 hours. We could actually go back and we search for a year worth of data. And if I run this search again, you're going to see that the results are returned within seconds.
So within seconds, I have over 500 million events. And going through my data, I can then look at these fields again, and I can toggle on and off and include things within my search. So maybe I want to look at the direction of traffic. For example, let's look at the outbound traffic only by saying direction is not inbound. As soon as I do this, my search query is enriched and I can go back to 24 hours and search again. Now, one of the value adds for Exabeam SLM is that it includes free threat intelligence feeds. As a result, we can automatically enrich all logs coming into our platform with our threat intelligence information. So, if I wanted to see any logs that I have known ISCs related to them, I can simply come into my field summary, select IOC, type true, and add that to my query. And now I'll be able to see all of the events that have been ingested that actually are matching against the known threat intelligence source. Furthermore, what, you, what we can show you is that it's not just a known threat intel hit, whether it's an IP or a domain, but will also give you the type. In this case, a botnet from a C2. The other thing I may want to do is that I know I have my firewalls in place and a lot of this activity is probably being blocked or denied. So I want to focus this search a little bit more and I'm going to come down to the outcome. I want to make sure that I want to see events only where this traffic was successful outbound to a known IOC. The great thing here is outcome is a field defined by a common information model. So I do not have to know between my different firewalls and network vendors, is it allow, is it deny, is it success or block? I can simply say, was it success or failure? Once I've added that to my query, I can run search again for my final result. Now, I could obviously go ahead and save this search. And this could be a search that I run every morning when I come into the office to check on what the latest hits are according to the threat intel. But Exabeam allows you to take a more proactive approach to any queries that you have created. I can convert this search instantly into a correlation rule, which opens up our correlation rule building engine. We built the correlation rule app specifically and closely tied into the search experience. So from this screen, you can see it has already populated the search query from the search application. From the correlation rule application, I can write additional fields to my query, test that query, and essentially publish my query, which we're about to do now. Finally, what you will see is that we can monitor all custom correlation rules for your most critical business entities and assets, including defining high criticality via threat intelligence service source activity, for example. My next step is to add conditions. So, for example, if I wanted to build a port scan rule, I can customize counting and aggregation. But in this case, I'm just looking to match known IOCs. So I'm going to trigger this rule at any time this event matches my search. Next thing I can do is set the outcome. Since this IOC is of key importance to me, maybe I'll create an alert when it happens. So when this rule triggers, it will create an alert for the analyst or me to review. I'm just going to call this IOC hit. and then click Next. I'm going to give the same name for the rule. Maybe I'll put my initials on the, on the side. I'm going to categorize this as an external threat and a use case of malware for now, giving it a priority of low. I can hit Save now and save this rule. So here I can see all of the rules that are in my correlation experience that I've created. I can see whether they're enabled, I can see the severity set, the use case, when they were last modified, created, and who created them. So in summary, I have my data coming in, I'm able to search it, I've built my correlation rules. Now I may wish to visualize my log data as well. For all of my visualizations, we built a brand new platform level dashboarding service. The dashboarding service supports up to 14 different chart types where I can build visualizations and dashboards on all of the log data that I'm collecting from my, all of my telemetry sources. So here I have various different dashboards that I've created. Xbeam ships pre-packaged dashboards to get you started, like a summary of all our analytics anomalies or a summary of case management so I can see how my stock is performing. 
Let's take a look at one of the dashboards I've created called Network IOCs. I can use the search experience to search for any dashboard on the screen. This dashboard was created using our own threat intelligence. I can see things like IOC trends over time. I can see where the IOCs are coming from via this world map. I can see breakdowns of the top destinations, IPs, domain source IP addresses. And this is totally customizable. How about we look at a dashboard which looks at all of our RDP connections? Maybe I want to summarize my RDP traffic using these bar charts. We could look at things like summarizing our top MFA logins as well. As we scroll down, we also even have this great Sankey chart that helps summarize and visualize data flow across the environment. So essentially, the dashboard app is where analysts can visualize data according to their role, requirements, and understand trends and risk within the organization. The dashboard helps visualize activity, spot anomalies, and focus the analyst's attention immediately to the key areas of interest. We're able to export to PDF for compliance reasons or view dashboard data with customized reports and dashboards with 14 different chart types. Now that we've completed our onboarding, our collection, our search, and our dashboarding, and also our correlation rules, it's time to start lo looking at how we review the organization's security posture. We can do this by using the Outcomes Navigator application. Outcomes Navigator maps the log feeds that come into the Exabeam platform against the most common security use cases. It also suggests additional logs or passing improvements as options to improve coverage. We can see here the current security coverage and outcomes, tips on improving coverage and security coverage, with the ability to create and share coverage exploration reports. To monitor health, Exabeam has the Service Health and Consumption application. This helps me visualize my service health for every service and application, as well as data consumption, while monitoring connections and sources. Service Health and Consumption provides dashboards showing uptime and health of all the log passes, applications, data flows and connections, as well as your total license count. This can help with long-term storage and capacity planning. We can see here the service health shows the collection and processing, and you can also drill down to further statistics if you so wish. I hope this overview of security log management gives you a good understanding on how Exabeam can be used by an analyst to effectively ingest logs, troubleshoot the pipeline, understand risk, and understand the organization's security posture. And while understanding this risk, have the capability to investigate indicators of intent right through to resolution. Thank you very much.